we're going to talk about debugging your WordPress site, looking at your site health, and all kinds of things that you need to do if you are developing a membership site or if you're starting to dabble in coding a little bit and building it yourself. These are going to be some helpful tips that you'll be able to use if you want to add custom code, tweak functionality, and are just feeling a little nervous about doing it and thinking you can break your site and ruin everything. So Andrew's going to set you up to be successful. Cool. So welcome to this chat. I'm pretty excited to be doing this chat with everyone. I try to make it beginner friendly, so I'm not going to dive too deep into like actual coding side of things, but rather a bit of troubleshooting and debugging and what that means in WordPress and paid membership. Right. To start off, what is debugging and what is the difference between troubleshooting and debugging? So troubleshooting is the process of finding the cause of the problem and debugging is the process of identifying and fixing the problem. I had to do a little bit of Googling there just to make sure I got my descriptions right there because I was just a little bit confused where I was like, it's the same thing, but it's actually not. So we're going to do a little bit of like troubleshooting. I'll give you some pointers on what to look out for and things like that. So some common WordPress issues that I've seen in the past is the widescreen or the critical error. This is often caused by like a code error. I'll show you what that looks like on the screen. That's going to be part of a, de a live demo that I'm going to be doing. You get server errors. Those are quite common where it's like your server files or folders don't have the right permissions to read, write, or access the folder. You got limited resources on some hosting providers. They might only let you execute HP commands or scripts for about like 30 seconds. So if you're doing a large import and it doesn't run it automatically in batches, you're going to, you're going to run into some limitations there. Error establishing your database connection. So that's pretty self-explanatory. It's when WordPress cannot connect to your database. One that I've also seen in the past when I was doing agency work is getting stuck in maintenance mode, excuse me. That's something that happens often. And then general PHP and JavaScript warnings or errors that come from plugins, themes, or even WordPress itself. The link to the slides are going to be available somewhere after this call. And I've added in some references so you can go and dig a bit for some documentation and things like that, that will help you just get a better understanding of these types of issues and where to find help and things like that. So WordPress Site Health, this is something that has been introduced since WordPress 5.2. It gives you an overview of your site. So you, from a single screen, you can see like your server information, how much space you're using, what PHP version you're on, what plugins you have installed, themes, and some plugins also integrate with some custom information. And I'll show you a little bit about that in the demo. It's really great to get a quick overview and just find conflicting plugins, especially if you're working with WordPress on the day-to-day -day or you're quite familiar with like the WordPress ecosystem and other plugins and integrations that you know for a fact will conflict with each other. And this is really useful to provide any company support team with this type of information. The support person can, again, have a look at your entire site with a single like screenshots or like the information that is on the clipboard, like when you copy and paste it. And it really does make support a little bit easier to have a full overview of what a WordPress site is running. The reason this is so important is every single WordPress site is different. You have full control of what you install, what PHP versions you use, what plugins you use, you know, what custom code you use. So each support request that we get will have something different and so often it's specific to the environment itself and the combination of plugins installed. So to get to site health, you can go to your WordPress dashboard, go to tools, choose the site health information. And then at the top, you're going to select the info option and that will give you like an overview. There is an option to copy this to clipboard and that is what you can share with a support team. So I'll go over that in the demo as well. So what is needed to debug? Generally to debug even non-WordPress sites, you're going to need 
FTP or cPanel hosting access. Your hosting provider might not have something called cPanel, but they might have like a hosting panel where you manage your, your files that your web host allows you to upload and your domains and things like that. So you could use that access to gain full edit access to your folders and file structures. Or if you're familiar with FTP, that's also, that's fine. If you're on a WordPress site, a WordPress admin account will be needed just so we can work through certain settings in the dashboard that is not available to subscribers or editors and things like that. If you're comfortable in working with like file structures and even on a computer, if you follow a path on, you click on my computer, then you go to your C drive, then you go to like system 32, things like that. If that doesn't scare you, then this will be okay. It's not too technical. You'll also need a text editor. So something like notepad plus or VS code or something similar. It just helps you highlight a bit of the code errors and things like that to read the debug information. You don't really need this. This is just to dig into the code a little bit, which I want to do some basic code with you. And then just internet access to Google your error that you find as you go along. That always helps me. I just copy and paste like the full error that I get. And there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet that helps you find out what the problem is and what you can do to fix it. And you'll definitely just need some patience because sometimes the errors are really tricky and frustrating, but I'm going to be doing a fairly straightforward error with everyone. So it's just to get your feet wet in this world of debugging and programming that seems so daunting and scary. All right, so we're gonna move over to the demo. Let's see if I can do this right. Cool. So first off, I've set up debug sites on local WP. So I'm not gonna be doing the FTP side of things, but I'm gonna be showing you the file structure on my local environment or on my Mac. And I take it from there. So if things look a little bit different and you have to do a bit of like different navigations and things like that, that is up to your hosting provider and how they serve the files and things like that. But once we get into the actual WordPress installation folder, everything will be the same. The file structure and things like that are generally the same. So if you know where your WordPress site is installed under what folder on your web host, that is perfect. You can follow along just fine. So this debug site is running the bare minimum. I've got PM Pro installed. I'm going to show you how I insert a custom gist. It's going to break the site and then we can look at debugging logs and things like that to get it solved. So first I want to chat about some, the site cell status. Site cell, again, it gives you that information that will be available for your entire site. It's like a one click view that you can just get all the information that you need. It also gives you some neat little improvement. And we can just go through that quickly so I can talk through it. So to get to site health, you can see there's a widget here on the screen that's available by WordPress. But for the sake of the demo, I'm going to go to tools, scroll down to site health. Maybe let me just make it a little bit bigger so you can see. So you can see site health is busy loading and is trying to just determine if our site's okay or not. Don't be alarmed if you get a whole bunch of security issues and things like that. These are just recommendations for improvements. It's not necessarily like your site's in bad mode. You're going to get hacked or anything like that. But it just gives you, again, these are just recommendations to benefit your site. One thing to note with these recommendations is plugins can sometimes use this area to give like a notice. So these bottom two security notices, the 301 HD access redirect is not enabled. That's from a plugin called really simple SSL, I think it's called. So it's not necessarily a security issue because I understand like what's going on here and things like that. So you can just ignore them. You can see here some PHP modules are missing, the image, the magic is not installed, and then the INTL is not installed. That does sound like gibberish, but if you actually just search PHP module in magic, that always gets me. 
you'll find some information about that or click the helpful link just to help improve some of your performance on WordPress. So this is the first screen that just gives you the recommendations and improvements. It doesn't give you the snapshots of the entire installation or ecosystem of, of your websites. This is just to say, hey, we know there's a couple of things that aren't like totally correct or 100%, but if you know what you're doing, you'll understand these issues very easily and you'll either ignore them or take action. For example, it tells you like what to do. It's, it's saying you have inactive themes. You should only have one theme. Personally, I like having two themes so I can switch between the two during my development cycle and things like that. So again, if the shoe fits where we don't have to worry about past tests. If you do want to see and just learn a little bit about what it's looking for in WordPress and things like that. The past tests will give you a good indication of what's expected. And you might be, if you're running more than one site, you might be able to compare the two and see if there's any differences and try to figure out what's going on. So coming into support side of things with Site Health, if a company or our support team asks you for the Site Health information, you want to Navigate to Sites Health and then click on the little info at the top here. This is where it gives you the entire snapshot of your WordPress website. It, it takes you from WordPress to your database settings, to your service settings and things like that, which I'll just quickly run through each of them to show you like the key features. So WordPress, this is a real neat one. It tells you like what version you're using, what language you're using. It gives you your URLs. More importantly, it tells you like your environment type. Can anyone register on the site? So this is pertaining to the default WordPress settings. Directory and sizes, again, this just tells you like how much disk space your website's using. So if you have a large media library, you'll probably see your upload directory size, size be a couple of gigs or I don't know, terabytes if you have a lot of images and videos. We can get a little bit of information about what theme we're using at the moment, who's the author, things like that. Inactive themes on active themes, active plugins. You can see here's yeah, the plugins that I've installed at the moment. Media handling, this isn't too concerning. You can just take a quick glance at that. Server is pretty important. It tells you like what web server type you're running. So I'm on Apache, I'm running PHP 8. Then you can get like your memory limits and things like that. And if you're familiar with running into like memory sh shortages and timeouts and things like that, like the PHP time limits, you'll be familiar with these values and changing them and things like that. So it just gives you a quick overview of what's your server architecture, if you want to call it that. Database, again, it's just your versions and things like that with the table prefix, just the general information that a support person or developer might need just to understand what's running under the hood, if you can call it that. So constants, WordPress constants, we're going to be diving into some of these constants to debug our site just now. And yeah, so this is just constants that you can set in WordPress. You can just Google like WordPress constants to get a understanding of what each one does and things like that. The most important one on this video, I would say is not the file system permissions, but that's just to say like your access to your directories are okay. But the most important one is paid memberships pro specifically for my team. We look at this day every single day, every single ticket that provides us this information with, we go over. This helps us identify issues on sites almost immediately if we can. So it tells us our crons running, what payment gateway the site's using, how many orders there are, you know, sessions active, we get membership level settings. So if you have 10 levels, it'll show up here with the billing amount, the cycle amount, the expiration dates and things like that. We can see if there's a custom template. So a very popular way to customize PM Pro from a theme perspective is to create custom page templates. And that tells us like, hey, the site's running a custom page template. So if you're having a problem with checkout, we most likely know where this problem's coming from without actually logging into your site and looking around and 
for wasting everyone's time. So it gives us links to where your pages are set and then if there's any conflicts. So you can imagine being on the receiving end of doing support and helping customers and users with this information. We can immediately detect the more common issues of memberships aren't expiring on time or they're not expiring at all or their level page was set up incorrectly. It's not whatever. It's not allowing me to select the levels, not allowing me to cancel. We can immediately detect these things just to make it a lot quicker to resolve issues and just improve the customer experience. So if you want to check it out and you're running paid memberships pro, just navigate to site health at the top. You're going to select the info button and scroll all the way down. Now to copy it, you just go to the very top. I'm going to scroll all the way. Sorry about that. You're going to click copy site info to clipboard, and then you can just paste it in your ticket when you create a ticket. And that will give us all these sections on this accordion. It dumps it out in a single view of what that data will look like. I can actually bring that up real quick. Sorry, that's just my VS code. Zoom in a bit. So if I paste that in, you can see this is like the raw data that we all get. But you submit your site health information by the clipboard method. So again, immediately we can see if there's any obvious problems with your, with the WordPress website. So it's super helpful. I'm not going to save that. So now that's the gist of site health information and what you can do. If there's any questions, again, just leave a comment in the chat and we can always circle back and I can do another deep dive or demo this a little bit further on things like that. Again, just to cover this page, this is not the status that we need when creating a support ticket saying everything's good, your site health is good or there's problems. We're actually looking for the info tab. It's the more detail information that we require when debugging a site. So for this demo, I'm going to move over to debugging. I'm going to show you how I add a custom gist to my sites, which is going to break the sites. I'll try to break the sites in two or three ways, and then we can debug the, all the issues. So first off, I like to do a custom plugin. It just gives me a bit more control. It's my personal preference. If you've used PM Pro for a while, you'll know that we need, or not that we need, but you'll be able to use a custom plugin or you'll be able to use a code snippets, wordpress.org plugin. I get, it gets a bit confusing when I say in a plugin and this plugin, but there's many ways to apply code to your WordPress site, not just for paid memberships pro. This is my preferred method just because I can use my text editor, as I mentioned earlier, to work in the code and to navigate it's a little bit easier. And the nice thing with text editors is it gives you code errors as well. It'll, if your text editor is smart enough, it will, excuse me, it will give you an underline of saying like, Hey, there's a problem in the code and things like that. The objective of this demo is not to dive too deep into code. I don't expect anyone to fully understand the code that I'm going to be demoing at the moment. It's just. If you work with PM Pro, there's a lot of customizations you can do with code snippets and little tweaks like that. So I created this snippet earlier today. What it does is it creates a little short code that you can insert onto a page or post or wherever you really need it. It will create a list of membership level names that the current user has. So it will loop through all their levels and it'll create like a bullet points of I've got free level, I've got VIP, I've got bronze, whatever your level names are, it will show you that. And if they're not a member, it will show you, hey, you're not a member, he has a link to sign up for a membership level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all of this. Hit command C. I just want to I'll bring that on this now. So on local WP, I'm going to zoom in on this. I don't think I can. Try my best to 
make it as big as possible, but I don't think I can. No, I can't. So as I mentioned, each site has its own hosting panel. So yours is going to look different. Again, this is just because I'm running on Mac. So I'm working in my paths on my own computer. If you're using FTP, it's going to be a very similar view. Obviously, it'll just change a bit depending on the app you're using, but the concept is the same. So if you log into FTP, you'll just have to navigate to where your WordPress is installed. So it might be under like HTML, www, public underscore HTML, a subfolder, whatever it is. You just got to navigate to it until you get something that looks like this. I know my screen is a bit small. I'm really sorry. I thought I could increase the size of this stuff, but I couldn't. So anyway, the plugin is under WP content plugins. We're going to navigate to PM Pro custom where, which has all my scripts. I'm just going to double click to open it. So here's my plugin. It loads a custom JavaScript file that just on page load, it pops up and it says hello. And that's not working for a reason because I'm going to be debugging that as well with you. But yeah, so we're going to insert the code snippets. I'm just going to paste it in and you can see that it's pasted in and I'm just going to save it. So I'm going to command S or control S if you're on Windows. I'm going to keep this tab open and go back to my sites. And then I'm going to show you how to, I think it's still going to throw an error on the front end. If I load the page. So what I'm going to do is let's go to the front site. And as you can see, I get this big warning of my site is down. No one can access the site and things like that. So this is quite daunting. I know it's big, scary and orange and things like that. So by default, I haven't even enabled debugging on WordPress, but since it hits a critical error on my site, it's displayed this because by default, it shows these messages. I guess, depending on your web host and how WordPress is installed. So immediately on this screen, I've got all the information I can need to debug this problem right now. And then I'll show you how to hide these errors and make it a bit more of a discrete way to, you don't want your customers seeing this at the end of the day. So. You just got to read the error. If you don't know the error, you can even just try to copy it in and then paste it in and you might get a, a similar answer. It's not exactly the same. So that's warning. Fatal error, cannot read declare my PM Pro, my level short code. Previously declared in, yes, the past year, which is my local environment, yours will say W, maybe your website URL, whatever parts it's installed, public, WP content, plugins, PM Pro custom. So that's the custom plugin. I just opened and pasted it in, colon 17. So this is saying, hey, I've noticed there's already a function called my PM Pro, my level short code, which was declared on PM Pro custom plugin on line 17. So just to go back to my editor, that line 17 on your text editor, if you see on the left-hand side of the screen, you can literally count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and go all the way down to line 17. So you can see 16 and 17. So the lines sometimes get a little bit out by one or two, but you can see, hey, here's the function, my PM Pro, my levels, short code. So that's just to show you which saying like line level 17, where the issue is. And if we go back, it's this way. If we go back, it says in, so it's cannot redeclare it because it's in. Okay. The path again, local sites debug. What you're looking for is the WP content themes, 2022 functions on line 70. So what I'm going to do is just bear with me with a small screen. I'm going to go to themes. 2022 and it was function.php. So I'm going to open this function. And again, it, it's overwhelming when you start debugging on your first thing, but once you do a couple, you'll get used to it. And I'll explain the issue in more detail, what it means. So 
So we're going to go to line 70. Again, you're going to count the numbers on the left, scroll all the way down to line 70. And if I click on it there, you can see, oh, I've already added this to my site. This is actually quite a common issue where you might have, you might find just over Google or on our site, and maybe they have the same function name. And they might do different things or they might do the same thing. Maybe you're just not aware that you pasted it in your functions.php or you had another plugin, another custom plugin that a developer built and they had this function in and you found the function and you didn't remember that it was there and you added it in again. So the reason this is failing now, this error, if yet to Google just cannot redeclare PHP error, it will, there'll be hundreds of articles that come up with what the error is. So in PHP, you cannot have functions with the same name. So this is basically saying, Hey, I found my PM pro and my level short code plugin twice on line 17 yeah, in the custom plugin, the WP content plugin, PM pro custom plugin. And I found it in WP content themes. 2022 functions.php on line 70. So to solve this issue, we have to remove one of the functions, especially since they do the same thing. If I wanted to resolve this error because it was two separate functions doing different things, but they were named the same, I can just rename the one function wherever it's called in that particular file or in this area. So for this example, I could just rename it to my PM Pro levels shortcode underscore one, and I'll rename the function here, which will resolve the issue. But just for the sake of this demo, I'm going to remove it completely. I'm going to reload the page. I'm going to go back this way. Let's reload the page. It's just taking some time. I got worried. I thought it wasn't going to work. And if I go to my levels, that's where I put the shortcode. You'll see like your awesome membership level. So that's the current level that I've got. And that's one PHP issue. So when we're debugging PHP and things like that, we'll use the debug that is provided by WordPress. There are ways to debug JavaScript and things like that. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a way to hide those error messages just so it's not client facing. Just so your customers don't get a shock, they'll rather just see a bit more of a discrete error message. So what you're going to do is we've got to go back to our web host control panel or FTP. What you need to do is edit your wp-config.php. This is where we set those WordPress constants. You don't want to edit like any of the other stuff that you don't need to. It's fine. You can just leave it for now unless you're having trouble with that. WordPress generated this WP config file for me and it already included the WP debug. So what I want to do is I'm going to turn on debugging. I'm going to hide the debugging big orange message. I'm going to rather log the message to a file that we can discreetly work on. And then we can actually read like a longer error message. And then I'll break the code again, just so we can get a gist of it. So I'm going to turn on debugging. As I mentioned, WordPress will define some of these constants to be true by default. And that's why we were seeing the message. So I'm going to say WP underscore debug display. So that's that big orange message we saw. I'm going to set it to false. So we don't want to see it. We do want debugging on. And what you want to do is write it to the log file. You've got to love the order comp. Debug log true. But again, this is to say, okay, WordPress, I want to turn on PHP debugging. There's an issue with my site. The debug display is saying, hey, we don't want to display that big orange message in the browser. It's, it's a bit alarming and ugly. And it might make our customers run away for their life. And we want to log it to the default WP debug log. So we all go through that now. And we just go to save the file. So we don't need the WP config right now, but I'm going to leave it open just because the hints, which are, you'll see in the slides later, is you don't want to leave WP debug on in a 
production environments on your live site. It's best to just turn it on when you need it. A customer reported an issue or something, or if your site fatal errors, it also emails you since WordPress 5.2. I didn't demo that because I'm not getting the emails on my local environment. But if you run into a fatal error, you should get an email like from your WordPress site saying, like, hey, there was a fatal error and it gives you like a bit of that error log so you know where the issue is coming from. And that's a way to determine if your site has gone down or it's running into an issue. So that's just a tip. You're going to turn it off when you don't need it on your live site. If you're in a development environment or local environment, it's okay to leave on. I live with it on as we develop plugins and things like that, just to make sure we're not running into any errors. So yeah, I'm going to break the code now. I'll fix the code and then we can look at the log file, not particularly in that order. That's enabled. We go back to the site and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to deactivate PM Pro, which should break the site. Sorry, I'm so used to going to the PM Pro dashboard. Deactivates. So it's not going to break the sites on the back end. It's going to break the sites on the front end. We're going to go back to that My Levels page where I created the Levels page. And now you can see it, it doesn't give us a lot of information here now, but that's because we're logging the debug information instead of just displaying it on the screen. So this is all your customers or users will see on the sites if you enable debug logging and you hide the debug display constant. All these constants in that, again, are available on WordPress. If you just Google like WordPress debugging, I've got links in the slides that will help you. We've got a doc on our own site that talks through these constants in greater detail and what to look out for and things like that. So now we're going to debug. So we put on debugging. And now we're going to go into my fake FTP or C panel host. So where the debug log file is stored, again, it's in, I'm still in the WordPress installation folder. I'm going to go to WP content. And as you can see there, there's a debug log file. So if I open this, I'll zoom it. No, I'm sure I can zoom in on this because that's really small. No. Okay, wait, I don't want to tear it. Let's open it in VS Code. Is that I can zoom in with? All right. Even more scary than the last. So this is a different error now. It's not, as you can see on the first line of this. No, there we go. On line one of this debug log, you can see it says fatal error. So this is still a fairly clean debug log. <clears throat> when you're working with a lot of plugins, a lot of code, and you hitting the error, each time it's going to write the same log to your file. So that's also a good reason to turn off debug logging on your live site. So if you have a lot of visitors, like if we had to load that page and refresh it 10 times, these 19, 20 lines are going to be pasted into the debug log times 10. And I kid you not, I've seen debug log files that are excuse me, two to three gigabytes just because debug logging was left on and it was catching warnings and like some errors from years ago. And it really kills your hosting space. And it's, it can also be a bit of a security issue if you leave it on because people try to guess where WordPress is installed and they try to just find, figure out your paths and your usernames for your cPanel host and things like that. So it's always good to turn it on when you have an issue or if you notice an issue or a customer gives you an issue, tells you about the issue, work through the issue and then turn it off, delete the log file until next time. Or if you have a staging site, you can just leave it on and try to replicate the issue. So to fix this issue, again, understanding these issues just come with time because I've been coding for a couple of years and it's not the first time I'm facing these errors. So the best way to do is just Google search for like just copy PHP fatal error, uncaught error, call to undefined function. Even paste the whole thing in like search engines are smart enough to pull things out. 
extract what they need for the actual stuff you're searching for. So this error call to undefined function PM pro get membership level. So as you can see, I'm only getting this error since I deactivated PM pro. And that is because the function isn't defined PM pro. So PHP is like saying, okay, you're trying to tell me to run PM pro get membership levels for user, but it doesn't exist. And that's because PM pro is deactivated. But if you have a custom plugin and you're also writing custom functions, you might have misspelled the function name. Maybe that's, that could be a reason to an undefined function. So it just takes a little bit of time and searching these error messages for undefined function, PHP fatal error, and there's hundreds of articles and stack overflows and reddits and forums that will have information about this and people giving advice on where to go. So now the question is, this is all nice. It's one error in the log, which I will fix, but if your debug log is hundreds of lines, say a thousand lines, you're not going to know where to look. So the debug log categorizes it basically on the timestamp. So you can just scroll to the bottom if it's a really long one. Or what you can do is just search the contents of the log file for fatal error, like fatal error. And then just, again, we're looking at where, what class the error is coming from. So undefined function in this path. Okay, that's my installation folder, WP content plugins, yeah, pro custom PHP line 17. And then the stack trace, you don't have to worry too much about this for the easier debugging types of things. This kind of tells you like what was run before the issue occurred. So again, it tells you I've thrown in PHP on line 17. So since I've got the file open, I'm just going to go there, but you get the idea of you'll go into FTP, you'll find this path of where the folder's installed. Because at the end of the day, a web server is basically a computer with folders and they know what folder to serve and where. So it's very similar to local developments. It's just a different interface. So I'm going to go to the custom plugin and you have the function. This is a PM Pro built-in function that comes with paid memberships pro plugin. So, you know, this code is running on my page load, but PM Pro is not installed. So I'm just going to fix it real quick. We can say if, sorry, function exists, bro, get and reshell level. Oh, I better spell it right. Well, this is not going to work. User. Rapids are out. One, two. If function, let's return. So this will just output PM Pro install. So this, again, I'm not going to dive too deep into what this code means, but it's basically saying to PHP, please check that this function exists. If it doesn't, just rather show a message that PM Pro is not installed. If I save this, I go back to my site and refresh it, it should load. I always get nervous doing these things live. So you can see it just says a message like PM Pro is not installed. So now if I go back and I install PM Pro, activate. levels, you'll see the functionality is returned back. So that's what developers and freelance developers, customizations, custom code snippets, whoever has written those solutions generally builds for those type of things. Like we don't want people's sites to break if PM Pro is deactivated for troubleshooting or an add-on critical errors, your site, if PM Pro is disabled or another plugin that we're building an integration with is not active, it kills your sites. So that's just an insight on how developers 
prevent bug, like critical errors for like little things on oh, my plugins deactivated and things like that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show the debug log. So I'm going to clear it and save it just so we have a blank log. And if I, uh, so it'll still be there in the WP content folder. I'm going to refresh the page. Hopefully there's no more errors. Let's just open this with whatever. As you can see, it's still blank. So that means there's no more errors. My site is clear. There's no warnings. There's no errors. So I'm going to delete this log file because we don't need it now. I'm going to reopen the WP config. And what you can do is just set WP debug to false. You don't have to remove these other lines. The WP debug is like the main constant that controls turning it on and off. So it's okay to leave it in there. If you want to remove it, you can remove it. That's fine. We no longer need that. We no longer need, no, we do need this. No longer functions. So I'm sure you're wondering now, I said, hey, there was supposed to be JavaScript on the page that does a little alert pop-up. And this is quite a common thing where JavaScript is breaking on the front end. So PHP runs like on the back end side of things, like as pages are loading from the database and you submit a form and then that form data gets inserted into a database that will be the PHP side. And then the JavaScript is like browser facing, client facing. So that will cause issues when it's minified too much, like double minified or it's expecting a specific way the JavaScript is supposed to be coded and it's minified or it's cached. And with JavaScript, when the error occurs, it's like a domino effect. So if reloading my custom, I'm going to just tease on my custom JavaScript. So we load my custom JavaScript first. Anything that is JavaScript related that is load, tries to load after that is going to fail. So it's like a domino or waterfall effect, if you want to call it that. So anything that loads after that error is not going to work. And that causes quite a bit of problems with like payment gateways that you try to do cool little JavaScript things where it's, if you click on a button, the text automatically updates and things like that. So to debug that, you're going to open your website in your browser. For Mac, it's, com I like using, so I need to see which one it is use function and then it brings up like on my keys I don't know. it's just like on the touch bar it will bring up f1 to f12 you're going to press function and then f12 to bring up the console and if you're on windows it will be con just f12 because windows has f12 keys so that, that's a shortcut for google chrome if you're using a different browser it might be something else and so you can see I can zoom this in. Yes, I can. That's awesome. So I open this. You might get a screen that says elements, and this is to show you what elements you're on, but you always want to go to console. So if you suspect something that's not showing on like a button click, or if you click a checkbox and other fields aren't showing, or anything like that, that kind of happens in real time without page loads, it's often JavaScript. So you're going to press F12 or Command function f12 on mac and then everything in red is errors and everything in yellow i believe you can just ignore it it's not like a it's just a warning so it's not going to cause functionality issues now this doesn't tell you much if there's a missing bracket of argument list that's a bit foreign to you what you got to do is on the right hand side here, you can see there's the test.js. And I'm hoping that's going to pop up because I was having issues with it. Usually, if you hover on it, it gives you where it's from. Okay, so it's a bit small. So the jQuery migrate is there. Let's see if my script shows up. But basically, it's already showing test.js line two is where the problem is. I just want to show you. Now I see that before I click into it. No, it's just not working now. But if you hover on it, it's supposed to show you a little pop-up like it did now, like that with the jQuery migrate. So you can see 
the jQuery migrate is WP includes forward slash JS forward slash jQuery forward slash jQuery migrate dot. So that again, that's giving you the path to where the folder is. And I really want my test.js to show you because I know where it is, but the problem is it's not showing. All right, but you'll get the idea. It's supposed to show up. My computer's being weird. If you click on the test.js, how's it not loading? It's so weird. When you click through, it's supposed to take you through to the error. Oh, wait, wait, there we go. Looked like it loaded right now. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it says the error is found on um, debug.local, which is my website address. WP content plugins, peer pro custom forward slash test.js version 1.0, line 2. If I click on it, it takes you straight to the code and underlines it. As I mentioned, the code editors will underline that, and I'll show you what that looks like now. So this gives you an idea of what code is broken. Okay, so we've got to go back to our FTP, go to plugins, PM Pro custom, test.js. No, sorry, I want to open it in code. I don't want to open it in browser. So as you can see, there's a little red squiggly line underneath the pink squiggly bracket, curly bracket. And it's saying I'm expected. So again, as a programmer, you know what to fix this. I just forgot to close the test.js the alert function. Now that it's saved, and I go back, I just want to make this close down and I refresh the sides. It should pop up with, okay, fix this code. Uh, okay, wait, cached. Yep, it was cached. So it says, hey, welcome, fix this code. So that's that now the JavaScript is running. So with the debug log that I did previously, that was for PHP code. JavaScript code doesn't get written to that log. It's only like PHP errors and server errors, like fatal errors in the PHP side. For JavaScript issues, the best bet is to use console. I believe every browser has a console tab, and that will be what you use for JavaScript issues. You might see a couple. Again, if you have on the right-hand side here, it will tell you where it's coming from, what plugin or theme. So it gives you accuracy on where the issue is coming from, because as you can imagine, thousands of lines of code and plugins, it's quite difficult to guess where the issue is coming from. So that's two ways to debug PHP and then a way to debug JavaScript and what effects it has. So I just want to go back to the, I want to go back to the, uh, and I'm losing my, sorry, it's late yet. I'm going to go back to the slideshow now. I just want to, sorry, I've got so many tabs. Cool. So next slide. Just to give a recap, the best thing is do not panic. I've had it where people were like, I've deleted the whole plugin. I've, I've deleted WordPress and reinstalled it for like something as simple as what I was going through, like duplicate functions and things like that. Just take a breath and yeah, just relax. And it's not the end of the world. You will get through it. It's not, it's not. A major problem that can't be fixed, support there to help you. If you know what you're doing with debugging and things like that, you'll be able to troubleshoot and fix a problem relatively quickly. A good thing to do is remember the last action you did before noticing the problem. You get a lot of reports where it's like, all of a sudden my site started doing this. And then as we start working back with the customers, like retrace the steps. Oh, I installed this plugin and there was a conflict. And then we know, okay, check that. So just take a rough note of, did I recently activate a specific plugin? Did I recently activate a custom code snippet? Things like that. It's just good to take a mental note. Like, oh, after updating this plugin, I started getting errors. In it. So just be mindful with that. Write it down. That helps you take notes.
to enable debug code, it's the best to do it in the WP config file. And then again, the debug log can be found inside the WP content folder. Error messages and warnings will be added to this file if configured or displayed in the browser. Again, I showed you on the first issue that was just displaying in the browser in that scary message. And then we changed it to write to the debug log in WordPress. Once you're done, turn off debugging and only turn it on when you need it. I cannot stress enough that I've seen plugin or WordPress sites fill up their server space with a debug log, like out of space. You cannot upload a photo, you're out of space. And then I just added a reference link there on how to enable debugging on WordPress, which is available on pepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepepep
or features and things like that. And then backups, backups. This is super important. I have three variations of backups from on the WordPress side to the server side to my hosting environments, running it as well to pushing it to backups can fail at any time. And it's always good just to cover yourself and a backup can always restore if your site gets broken in such a way that you cannot revert. It's always good to just to have that copy on hand, especially for big updates. You can always just do a quick revert and your customers or users will never know.